All right, good evening everybody. It's Rob back with another video. And for today, I wanted to do a charcoal drawing from beginning to end, or at least as far as I can go before I bore you to death. And we're gonna do a, we're gonna do this gentleman here. This is a buddy of mine, Riley. I served with him in Marine Corps uh, many years ago. And uh, he gave me permission to use his, uh, his picture and uh, he's a good guy and uh, a great buddy. And so I dedicate this to my buddy, Riley. Thank you very much, Riley, for the uh, permission to use your pick and put your ugly mug out in the net so everybody else can see it and draw it, hopefully. So let's get going. How do we, uh, how do we get this guy right here onto this paper right here? Okay. I use the comparative measurements uh, technique. What does that mean in the, the statement itself or that, that phrase, that compound word, whatever you want to call it. Comparative measure means exactly that, comparing measurements, okay? You're not doing measurements in terms of inches or yards or meters or anything like that. You're measuring with your pencil or your barbecue skewer. When I draw from life, I use my barbecue skewer and I always hold my arm fully extended and I hold it like so. And the reason for this is I wanna make sure that my thumb can slide up and down. So I highly suggest that you hold your pencil, or excuse me, your, uh, your pencil or your barbecue stick or whatever you wanna use like this. That way I can go from very small to very large very quickly. And so I can just slide up and down. And so I'm just gonna, Take a measurement now. You can you can even practice life drawing. This is something I, I like to teach my students. I'll actually teach them these life drawing techniques, and you can practice this at home without having to hire a model or have a family member that will never pose for you uh, sit for a long period of time. All you got to do is you print out a picture like we got here, and put it far enough that your hand can't touch it, and you can practice this. And I'll see if I can make another video where I talk about just doing comparative measurements and how, how to use this little stick thing, okay? How to do that from life. But for now, we're gonna do the same exact thing, really, but we're gonna put it onto the photograph, okay? Now it's, uh, I don't know, nine, 10 o'clock at night here in Florida. I don't even know what the hell day is anymore because the coronavirus got me thinking every day is a Saturday. So it, it doesn't really matter. You could do it, you know, with your arm up in the air, but it can be much more accurate by putting your, your hand and your stick here on the paper. And I'm just gonna say, for example, this little black cap here is that big. Then I ask myself, well, what's that compared to, right? So I'm measuring and comparing, comparative measurements. What is this compared to another section of his face? Say the uh, central third or the bottom third. In this case, he's got a beard. So we don't know where his chin is, okay? Whatever you're gonna draw, you don't wanna start inventing uh, destinations like chins or, or whatever that you can't see. You can't say his hairline is right here or down here or up there or he has no hair at all or whatever uh, based on uh, just your guess because that's exactly what that is. That would only be a guess and it's not an educated guess. It's just, it's probably a bad guess. You don't want to guess. In other words, use what you have. What do we have as far as hard edges that we can use I like to call them little destination points, okay? So the top of the head is right there, obviously, where his little black uh, beanie cover here touches his forehead is like right there. Then his eye line, right? You can draw a line across your paper from the pupil to the pupil. Then the lowest part of his nose, because he's kind of looking down at the camera, we see up his nose and up to his eyes and his uh, eye socket, so slightly different angle. And then we got the mouth line. And I usually wouldn't have the bottom or the most lowest line would be the chin. In this case, we can't see it because of the beard. So the bottom line is going to be the lowest point. When it comes to portraiture, that would be his beard. And so that's going to be the lowest point, the bottom of the beard. Highest point is going to be the top of his head. I know it gets confusing, so I'll just keep making these videos and I'll keep explaining that. I'm going to try to just focus one video just on doing comparative measure, but I'm sure that if you listen to what I say and you watch what I do with my hand, you'll just start slowly 
catch it on. You'll say you'll just kind of get an aha moment, and you'll say, "Whoa, okay, I get I get what this crazy guy's trying to do." I always start off with my tools uh, ready to go. So here's my HB hard uh, on white paper. I'm using Strathmore drawing paper. Okay, it's on with the uh, dark, I believe it's green um, cover. It just has the word drawing. Don't get the one that says sketch because that's a more inferior paper. You want the one that says drawing. And they have like an off-white and then they have the more bleach white, which is what I like. And that's what you see here. And I'm using General's brand, uh, General's pencil or charcoal pencil. And again, HB hard. If I had an extra hard right now, I'd use it, but I don't, so I'm not worried about it. And I'm gonna use this throughout the whole process, and then when I need to get darker, probably in his beard, his eyes, and obviously the little cap on his head, then I'll go to a medium or maybe even a soft, okay? So the first thing I wanna ask myself when I'm drawing a person, place, or thing, doesn't matter, is, uh, where, you know, how is it oriented? Well, in a portrait, it's gonna be oriented mainly 99% of the time is going to be from top to bottom. And as you can see, he is from top to bottom. It's a head, right? It's a little head and shoulder shot. But now my second step is to orientate my paper in the same fashion. So instead of putting my paper horizontal and having a lot of negative space to my left and right, it just aesthetically, it just doesn't work. It doesn't look good. I'm going to turn my paper vertical. And most drawing papers are rectangular. So I'm going to put the long ways facing going like this up and down. So now my next step is to say, well, where's the top and bottom of my subject? Well, like I said, it's right here, the top of his uh, hat. I'm going to draw a little line for you right there. And there's the bottom of the beard. So right there's the bottom of the beard, top of his hat. That's what I need. Now over here on my paper, I'm going to draw it as big as I feel comfortable drawing. And that makes sense on this paper. And I'm going to treat it like if this was going to get framed, you know, I needed a mat and everything else. So I don't want to draw the top of his head a hair's breadth from the top of the paper. That's stupid. Why, why would you do that? Give it a few inches. Let your, I, I call it letting the drawing breathe. Give it some room, okay? Give it space so you can have it breathe and then get suffocated because you got everything pushed to the edges. So stay a few inches. And this size, by the way, this is a 18 by 24. So I'm gonna stay probably about, I don't know, three, four, five inches from the top, about that much. Okay, it doesn't matter. You don't have to start measuring. And I always pr try to put the head where it's oriented, uh, uh, it's, it's off center vertically. What I mean by that, it's a little above center. So let's just say this is halfway on the paper. I don't wanna put his eye line there, okay? This has to do with compositional rules. It looks better when you put a head, in my opinion, above halfway. So I don't want his eye line from pupil to pupil to be way down here, nothing wrong with that. But my own personal choice is to always put it above the halfway mark. So somewhere around this range is where I'm going to want his eye line to be. Roughly. It doesn't have to be exact. Roughly. So, all right. So let's mark where the top and bottom is. Again, the top is his, the top of his head, the, the, the little black cover there. And then, of course, the bottom of his beard. So I'm going to say I want to draw the top of his head. And notice I'm holding my, my pencil. Like I said in my previous videos, you always want to do the little ringing, ringing a bell method, I call it. Okay? Like you're ringing a bell. So I'm going to put the... Head, I'm gonna say the top of his head is gonna be roughly right there, okay? I hope you guys can see that I'm drawing it at night. I usually do this stuff in the mornings or afternoons. So I'm next to windows, but it's all pitch black now. And now the bottom of his beard, where do I want the beard to be? And remember, it's just a head and shoulder thing, so I'm not gonna go crazy here. Uh, and basically, it's just all about his face. And so he's got that big bushy beard, which I find really interesting. I'm gonna draw his beard right here. Okay, now notice this is significantly bigger than the photograph. Photograph is, I don't know, that's probably all of like nine inches tall. This is like, I don't know, 13 inches, I don't know, whatever. It looks good at this size paper. Don't do transference, okay? We don't want to start doing transference. What's transference? When people hear comparative measurements and they, they get stuck on the word measurement and they start doing this thing, this is that big. And so I should do it that big on my paper. And they just start transferring these measurements over, right, for all these pieces of the face. And what you're basically doing is you're unlearning. You're not learning a damn thing when it comes to art, okay? You're not going to learn to draw that way because you start using that, that mathematical, scientific side of your brain, 
rather than the artsy part, for part of your brain. So you want to make sure you use the art section of your brain. Okay, so don't start, this is this big, because then you're going to be stuck with always drawing the exact same size of the paper. And from where I come from, that's called a human Xerox machine. And that is not what I want you to be. And plus, it just makes for, just it's just terrible. Okay, don't, don't do that. So we're going to just use the idea, the proportions that I see, that relation between, say, the size of his hat up here to the size of the, from the bottom of the hat, say, to the bottom of the nose. I'm going to compare those two to each other and say, well, this area up here is a little bit smaller than that area there. Now, I say a little bit. When I say a little bit, I have a lot of practice. My little bit is pretty accurate, usually. Hopefully, I don't embarrass myself on video today. When you're new to this, your little bit can be way too little or way too much. And that's, that's where practice comes in. So you say, well, this is a little bit bigger than that. Practice. It's just a matter of drawing and practice. And we'll go over some more stuff in future videos where you start seeing ways of practicing where you don't have to do a whole full-blown portrait. Okay? And what's great about this technique that I like to teach is it's not, even though I like focusing on portraits, I also do figures and still life. It, you can apply it to, to anything. A chicken, a duck, a bird, a cow, whatever you want. You can draw shoes. It doesn't matter. It's all the exact same techniques. So there's no such thing as Learn to draw a hand or learn to draw a foot. Everything is drawn the exact same way, in my opinion. Okay? So let's get into this. So that's the top of the, uh, the head there, the bottom of the beard. And I'm already orientating it in a slight angle visually. I'm just kind of in my mind seeing it a little bit of angle. He's got a little, his head, his head is tilted a little bit to our left, his right. And so there's that. Now, I'm going to try to find center. Okay? Why? Because that's easy. Okay, if you told somebody what's the distance between my finger and my finger, most people could point to halfway relatively easy. So I try to go for halfway and see if there's something that is functional, something I can actually use there. Sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. So I'm going to get my uh, little barbecue skewer here, and I'm going to go to what I think is about halfway between the beard and the top of his head. Now I'm going to say probably, to me, it looks like his mouth line. Maybe it is, maybe it's a little, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm off by a lot. I don't know. So let's go to where I'm guessing the bottom of the beard to be to the mouth, and it's that big. Now I'm gonna hold my, my index finger there to mark the uh, destination, and then the tip of the uh, stick is on his mouth, and I'm gonna hold that, and now I'm gonna bring my finger up to where the mouth is to see if it's the top half. I'm, lo and behold, I was pretty close. So from the beard to the mouth, it's a little bit smaller than the mouth to the top of the head. So. That's pretty close to center, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I'm going to call that center, even though it's not exactly center, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to pick what looks to be about halfway, maybe a little lower than halfway like it is in the drawing. Excuse me, like it is in the uh, photograph. And I'm just going to make a really light line. If you can't really see the line, that's a good thing, okay? I mean, you on the video, not good for me because I need to see them. I can see the line. I hope you can. If you can't, that's a good thing. That means I'm using very little pressure. Now I'm going to compare my bottom to my top half. And I now, because of what I see here, my bottom half should be a little bit smaller than my top. Just a little bit. And it is, but uh, I want to say it needs to be a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to bring the line down just a hair. Just a little bit. Because I'm tired... I'm going to turn on some music. All right. If you can't hear the music, too bad. Let's go. So that's going to be the mouth line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little uh, line. Really, really light. Okay. This helps you if you're a very busy person. I got little kids. And so sometimes, you know, they run in and they, they need daddy to do something. So... I'll do this just so when I come back to it, I remember what all these lines mean. And I'm going to put ML, Mike Lima, mouth line. That's all that means. Now I know that the mouth is here, so the nose and eyes are above that, obviously. So let's go up to the top half, because from the mouth line down to the beard, there's really nothing there but hair. A little bit of flesh, nothing that really concerns me. So let's go to the hard stuff. Let's go from the mouth up. So my mouth up. Let's see what's in there. Let's go into that space from my mouth line to my top of the head and see if there's a halfway line that is 
gonna cut this space and make it more e much more easier for me to see where things go. So in this space, halfway is about here, what does that mean here? Well, from my mouth line to the top of his head, the space that I'm talking about here, what's halfway? To me, it looks about the eye line. So from his mouth to the top of his head, his eye line seems to be about the middle. So I can just double check. I can go like this where his pupil line would be. And you, I suggest you draw the lines. Let me do one for you. For you guys, if you've never done this method, okay, this is basically what all artists have been doing since, uh, since the Renaissance, okay? This, this is a technique that goes back centuries, and it works. It works. And so from his mouth to his eye line, it's that big. And then from his eye line to the top of his head, oh, way up. So really, halfway should be quite a bit higher. So maybe, I don't know, maybe where his eyebrows meet right underneath his little black cap there. Let's bring that line over there. Let's get rid of this here. And let's see, from his mouth line to the top of his eyebrows there, and then from the hat down. Oh, no, not good. Not half, right? But we got other destinations we can pick. You can pick the eyelid, the top of the glasses. There's other stuff you can pick, okay? So from the mouth line to the top of the head, I couldn't find a halfway point. If you took your time, you could figure it out. And you probably, you know, the top of the eyelid or something like that, knock yourself out. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna zip through this, okay? So from the mouth line through the top to the top of the head, I'm gonna say the eye line, even though it's not halfway, I'm gonna say that's about what I'm gonna call a 60-40. From the top of the head to the eye line is 60%. From the eye line to the mouth is 40%. Okay? So the distance in this space here, mouth line to the top of the head, I'm gonna come down to where halfway is more or less, and then come down quite a bit more and call it a 60-40. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I like using percentages because it usually makes it easier for my, uh, for my students to understand what I'm getting at, okay? So 60, 40, what does that mean? It means more than halfway, right? In one way or another. Top half is bigger or the bottom half is bigger. That's all 60, 40 is. So I'm gonna say that this eye line here, and I'm gonna put EL for eye line, and that's gonna be my 60, 40 there. And then, what's above his eye line, okay? I'm looking at big stuff, by the way. I'm not looking at tiny little eyelashes and little tiny wrinkles. I'm, try I'm not trying to find all the itsy bitsy stuff right now. You know, little stickers on the thing or this buckle or whatever that is. I'm not, I don't care about that right now. I want the big chunks of meat, okay, the big areas. So from his eye line, where we just left off, to the top of his head, is there a halfway point there? No, it it's somewhere in this black cover there, his black... Uh, whatever you call it, hat. And so, but we got right here where it touches the forehead, the rim of his little black hat there. And that's about one, two, three spaces. In other words, a third. So from the eye line to the top of his head. We get fast forward to this. From his eye line to the top of his head, I'm gonna come up in that space, I'm gonna come up about a third of the way. So from the eye line to the top of his head, I'm gonna imagine thirds. You can sketch them out if it helps you. And that's gonna be where the little uh, black hat thing meets his forehead. I'm gonna draw a little uh, line. I'm gonna call it HL for hairline, but in this case, not hairline, it's hat line. And that's it, that's, that's the big space. And then later on, I'll go ahead and fill in all that big stuff. Now, between his eye line and his mouth, is his nose and his nose is about not halfway but lower than halfway so i'm going to call it right about there so from his eye line to his mouth not halfway but a little lower i'm going to call it that right there i'm going to call that oh, let me draw it right here for you guys and so there's his line these are the lines and the destinations that i'm looking for guys okay so i got the HL for the hat line, EL for the eye line. Then you got the, uh, what is it, the nose line. I forgot to mark that off. Nose line. And this is really kind of a quickie thing, right? I'm especially because I'm doing on video. I'm just trying to kind of get this done. Now, 
I look at the, uh, the you're always gonna adjust it. So later on, after I go through this process in a little bit, before I continue to draw, before I start drawing little, you know, eyes, like a lot of people, they jump right into drawing. They just can't wait. Oh, I don't, I don't have that kind of patience. Well, get patience. It's as simple as that. If you don't have patience, get patience. Go out and buy some. I don't know what to tell you. You're not gonna get better at this because you decided to be quick. You're just gonna make a ton of mistakes and you're never gonna learn. You just, and you keep repeating the same mistakes. I say that in my students all the time. Patience is the one thing people lack that I can't help you with. I can help you with everything else. But if you don't listen, if you just keep, you know, just going crazy and, and just barging ahead and you don't check yourself, you know, there's nothing I can do. So slow yourself down would be the most important thing you could do to make sure that your drawing comes out good. And then what we're gonna do is, once we're done with these spaces this way, we're gonna check them, okay? We're gonna check them. Now I'm looking at the spaces, I'm looking at this eye line, and it seems to be, on my drawing anyways, halfway between the hat line and the nose line. Then I look here, and the hat line to the nose line, uh, the nose line to the eye line is a little bit bigger. I, I wanna say that the eye line should come up just a tad. I notice that the angle, I'm already doing it, right? I'm already doing the angle that I see there. It's a slight tilt. Don't over angle things. People do that all the time. It's a slight tilt. And so it's a nice, gentle slope. You don't got to be perfect. You don't got to get, you know, 22.65 degrees. You know, you don't got to be a human protractor or compass or whatever. You don't have to be that exact. You just got to get close. So I like this. I, I think that's a pretty good, uh, depiction of the proportions that I see. You know, kind of crazy music. So, let's keep going over here. Put this thing on loop. So I like those proportions. I like what I see there. So now what? what's the next step? Okay, now I got the, all the top to bottom and I'm happy with it. Of course, I, I'm, I'm kind of rushing through this, okay, because I just want to get this done. I want you guys to take your time. What's the next thing? I got from top to bottom, I got all the important features, right? The top of the head, the bottom of the beard, the hat line, the eye line, the nose line, the mouth line. And there's really nothing else there to speak of uh, that's worth mentioning, really. Now, how do you get the width? How do I make... This head in my drawing here, comparatively speaking, proportionally speaking, I should say, the same as what I see there. Now, a lot of people just take wild guesses. Knock yourself out. There's no need for that. Okay? It's not that difficult. I'm going to just take the width, and the width, I always like to do it across the eye line. Okay? Um, but because his hat is pressing his hair and ears up against his face, I'm going to go all the way out to here where you see my stick, right out here, okay? And so what is that? What's that equivalent to? So, well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have to maybe cover up the camera just a little bit, I hope not too much. And roughly, I'm gonna go across the eye line just to stick to my normal method. That way I go to the same spot. And from the edge of the hat to the edge of the hat is that big. I take that measurement, I hold my fingernail, I'm gonna put this top of the stick on the top of his head and see if it matches up any destinations. And look at that, the top of his head to his mouth line are practically the same as his width, okay? His proportions on that day at that body weight with that beard and those glasses and that hat, at that angle that the picture was taken at, from the top of his head to his mouth line is the same distance as the overall width of his head more or less across the eye line area. So this is the same as this. So I come over here and I find that answer which is top of his head to mouth line. And I say that right there on my drawing is equivalent to the width. So I'm gonna take that, put it sideways, and I measure it across the eye line. So I'm gonna make my mark across the eye line. I'm making sure that this space here and from my fingernail to the edge of the paper are similar. So I kind of centered him on my paper from left to right. And there it is, that's the borders of his head from left to right, okay? And now I have a proportion that I believe should work for the, uh, the proportions that I see here, okay? It's very similar. So this is the edge of the hat, 
the other uh, edge of his hat over here on his right side. And now his ear would be covered under there and the, hat and the uh, glasses and eyes and everything would be under there. Okay, so now that we broke the overall width down, now that we have that, now we go into that width and break it down. Just like we did the height and we broke it down into its individual pieces, we gotta go from left to right and try to get that and put in those individual pieces. So what is from left to right that I go for first? I always go in a portrait straight for the eyes. Try and measure out from left to right the eyes. Eyes are roughly, on a human face, we are roughly five eyes across, okay? If you took the width of your eye and you put it about five eyes across, that's what the, the usual uh, amount that we use as artists as, a, as just a general guideline. But rarely do we have people that are five eyes across. Usually it's like, you know, the three eyes in the middle, you know, your eye, your other eye, and then the space in between your eyes is equivalent to one eye's width. So let's just call that the cyclops eye. And then the eyes on the side are usually not full eyes in width uh, and space. It's really about three quarters of an eye, even half an eye. But we use ha uh, five just as a general uh, guideline. So we're gonna do that. And I know you're saying, oh my God, what the heck is this guy talking about? I know, I get it every time. People get confused with this whole width thing and all that. And I'm trying to keep things spaced out where I don't get in front of the camera and you guys can see me. Um, but I'm having a hard time. I keep having to reach over to him. Usually I'd have the picture here. Well, I just look at it on my computer and just do it by eye like that. But I'm trying to show you guys what I'd want you to do. That's the angle on the side of his head. So I just want a similar angle like that. I'm just drawing very loose light lines. Now, let's find how many eyes across he is. So we got his eye, which his tear duct's roughly right around there. I'm trying to make some marks so you guys can see. And then his eyelash, I'm gonna go all the way up to the eyelash, it's right there. And so there's one eye, a little bit more than an eye, his tear duct in here somewhere. And then there's the other edge there. What I'm gonna do is, and there's a million ways that artists will do this. A lot of times people, they just kind of guess. They just, they just eyeball it and then they adjust all kinds of stuff. I'm trying to give you the, the most structure humanly possible, okay? It's not easy because a lot of this art stuff is very abstract thinking and it's hard to explain it in a constructive way, but I try my best to, to make it where, you know, I use layman terms and, and try not to confuse people too much. So as you can see this line right here, the edge of his eye and his tear duct, it's the same space from the tear duct to the other tear duct, and then from the tear duct to the edge of the eye. There are three equal spaces roughly. And then from the edge of the eye all the way out to the edge of the hat, from the edge of this eye all the way out there, he's roughly about bigger than an eye, and then it's one, two, three eyes, and then about another eye. So it's four, and then a fifth, and a hair bit more, right? So you can just try to break it down and say, well, there's a five eyes and a little bit more, so it's bigger on my left side here. or you can then go over here and say from corner to corner of his eye and then say, what, what's that equivalent to? And then you can go like this and say, well, that's equal to, whoa, well, you look at that, right where his forehead touches his hat to his mouth line. That's the answer. So from the mouth line to the hat line is equivalent to the corner to corner eye spacing. So from the far edge of one eye to the far edge of the other eye is the same as his hat to mouth line, and that's convenient. Now, where do we put this distance that I just discovered? I need to put it somewhere across the eye line here. But where, over there, there, there? Well, we know he's got a little bit more meat on this side, because he's looking slightly to his left, and we got a little bit less on this side. So we need to leave a little bit bigger space here. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm looking at the tip of my stick to the edge of the, the head that I drew earlier, and then my finger to the edge of the head over here, and I see that this space is slightly bigger than this one. So I'm gonna say it's somewhere in that vicinity. And so I'm gonna draw in my lines now. And that's the full extent of his eye, right? The full width of his eye. These are sliding back on me. And so his eyes, you're gonna draw basically this space, you're gonna cut up into thirds. And that's gonna give you the right spacing. And so that's gonna be one eye roughly in there and one eye roughly in there. And so that's where the eyes are gonna sit. 
I mean, is, is the pupil line or the eye line as I like to call it. And so now you know there's an eyelid above this line and then underneath this line, okay? Drawing is a lot of work, guys. It takes a lot of practice, okay? Whatever method you wanna try to go out there and practice, that's your business. Just remember, it takes a lot of work. So practice, practice, practice. You'll notice that the hat starts down here by the, his nose line, which I'm designating to be down here somewhere. And so now, now that I know where his nose line is going to be, I go up like this, and it cuts to about halfway between the edge of the hat and the edge of the face. I mean the eye, excuse me corner of his eye. So now I'm kind of using a, an educated guess, right? I'm staying within those boundaries roughly, and I'm just kind of going outside that eye about halfway. Nice and loose, okay? Nice and loose goes the goose. Just made that up. You are allowed to use it. Never heard that before, but if it exists, I apologize. The center of his head is gonna be pretty much the highest peak. So in between the eyes, right in between them, is gonna be the center of the head. Some people say, oh, hey, uh, Rob, well, you know, why, why don't you do that, that cross X thing that people do to get the center of the head? I don't need it for the way that I draw. I don't discount that. If you wanna use that, if you figure out a way to put that, and occasionally I'll use it, but not very often, just, I just don't need it. Because you see, I'm giving myself my my destinations, and I'm just kind of doing my best educated guess on these proportions. I just, I don't really need them. I don't need that vertical line that does this thing that you see people do all the time, right? Every single video and book out there has that. Nothing wrong with that. Please use it if it makes you comfortable. Use that. I don't need it. For the way I just explained to you, you see, I've been dropped to this point. I haven't used it. Um, just because I never had to use it. Once I developed how, this drawing method, if you want to call it that, uh, I didn't need any more, or ever really. And so now I'm going to cross his beard area right here. I'm not going to get all squiggly lines right now. I'm just going to kind of outline the big shape. It kind of comes down like that, about here or so, and the same bushiness on that side, and it stands to the right of this edge. And so I'm just trying to get that big chunk of flesh and, and or hair actually I'm trying to get that in there and I don't really care about the actual hairiness of it all I care about is the outside dimensions I got more or less it's it's a beard okay scruffy beard it's not something that needs to be done with a whole lot of precision if you made it a little bit wider or thinner it, you're gonna be good don't worry about that. So now I got my eyes and I just kind of went ahead and did the beard there and you're starting to see how it's starting to shape out. Now I need to know how wide the nose is. Well, the nose generally in most cases when someone's looking directly at you and he is, but he's not completely level with us. Um, the nose is usually as wide as your center Cyclops eye. Okay. It's usually that wide right here. Let me draw a line for you. Right. But that isn't always true. Sometimes your noses can be wider. Um, if the head turns a little bit one way or tilts or something, I'll throw that off a little bit. But the edge of this nose, use my barbecue stick, is pretty much with the edge of the eye there, or the tear duct, I should say. The edge of this nose is cutting into the tear duct. And that's because his head is slightly turned this way. So I'm gonna go past the tear duct just a little bit. Let's erase this. And that's giving me just a general width of his nose. His mouth, in most cases, back to the generic, or excuse me, the general uh, proportions of the human face, the mouth is usually from the corner to corner, right? The width of your mouth is equivalent to uh, the distance between one pupil and the other. Okay, so the center of the eye to the center of the other eye, roughly. But there's people that have, that can sometimes vary pretty widely. Um, there's people that have very small mouths, especially in women, you'll see that more often than in men. Their mouths will be a little smaller than that space that I just described. And so let's find out here. 
again, he's got the mustache part of his beard. It's covering the corners of his mouth. So I'm just going to kind of take the edge of his mustache or excuse me, his goatee area right there. I'm going to say that because that's a nice hard edge that we can follow. And then that right there. And then we see that it goes eh, about the uh, from right to left on his eye, about the first third or so. And then over here, it kind of goes almost to the center of the eye, roughly. And it looks something like that. And so now I know where that goatee or whatever edge is. And this would be his mouth. His mouth is relatively flat in the picture, so we want to keep the mouth relatively flat. <coughs> now notice, this is just a bunch of lines. It's just a bunch of lines and spaces. Look how easy it would be, uh, like the center line that I was, like to, I was telling you about earlier that I don't really use. Look how easy it is for me to move something. Now, let's just say that, rep, that represented something important and you had guessed wrong or you felt like, wow, that came out too wide or whatever. It, it's just one line that I need to erase. If I feel the eyes at this point, wow, they are way too high or too low, whatever the issue is, I can bring it down. If the nose is too high or too low, I can, I can start adjusting these things. If you need huge adjustments, that's not good. You shouldn't need ginormous adjustments. It should only be small increments, okay? So at this scale, if I was moving things, say a quarter to a half an inch, that is, that's huge. That's just ginormous, okay? So small incremental changes is what you do because that'll be easier for your brain to follow than if you had messed up so badly that you need huge change. Now, if you need a huge change, you feel you gotta move it that much, you know, by all means do so. But then you really, that means you gotta practice more of your, um, your, your sense of proportions. You need to practice that more um, than anything else. Okay, so just underneath his cap there is his eyebrows. I'm just gonna sketch that in roughly. I'm just roughing things in, okay? And he's looking down. Looks like he took a selfie or something. He's looking down at the phone. So I'm gonna start drawing in the shape of his eyes. Look how I'm holding my pencil. Very, very lightly. People complain all the time. Oh, Robert, I'm so uncomfortable when I do that. Tough, suck it up. Get her done, as my buddy would say, as he would say. Okay, suck it up, man. This is great practice because if uh, I don't like that shape and I probably won't like it, I need to adjust it in some way because this is a rough sketch. I can erase that. Let's, let's do that. Boom, gone. Because it's so light, I can make it go away. It's not a big deal. But I can get a lot of precision. precision. And don't discount being uh, comfortable when you draw, physically comfortable. I see people twist it into pretzels and all kinds of stuff when they're trying to draw, okay? I'm having to do that right now because I'm on this camera. I'm trying to film myself for you guys, for your benefit. So I'm trying to stay back. I'm trying my best not to cover it, but I wish I could be at least another foot or so closer just so I can lean forward a little bit more. So I'm kind of uncomfortable, but I bring that up just so you know that it's something that is an issue when you're drawing, you know, you're sitting at home, you shouldn't be uncomfortable. Physically, you should be comfortable and happy. Okay, happy artist means you're gonna have better work. And so now, I'm looking at the distance between the bridge of his nose, which is right there on this side, on the left side of his face, where the glasses touch. And I'm looking at that, and it's writing just up on that tear duct, roughly. Now, glasses can sometimes be a pain in the butt, but really, I try not to think about it. I, I kind of leave glasses usually to the end. I don't worry about them too much. I worry about the features, the face, you know, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And then the glasses just becomes little destinations, okay? That I can go and measure to and, and, and take a good guess on. So let's do that. Let's do, the, uh, let's do the lens on the right eye, okay? Let's go for the left and right of the lens. So. Let's go on the left here. This lens right here. I'm just gonna draw a black line on his cheek. So that's the left edge of his lens roughly, right? Not the, where the stem is, but right here. Where is this line? Well, compared to the skin behind it, and you see the corner of his eye and the edge of his little black hat there, 
It's right in the middle of that space, roughly, right? So it's roughly in the middle of this space. So I'm going to draw that, and that's going to be the edge of his glasses. I know they got kind of a rectangular where this is a little smaller than the inside part, but for right now, I'm going to treat it just like a rectangle. And let's see this edge over here. I'm going to draw it right up on his nose so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This edge right there. What? Where is that? Well, this edge, when I look at the skin behind it, it's between the tear duct here roughly and the other tear duct over here. And it's pretty much in the middle of that space, isn't it? From the tear duct to tear duct, it's in the middle of that space. So from tear duct to tear duct, it's roughly around that vicinity. Again, this is all being roughed in. I can move things over, left, right, whatever I need. The other lens, it starts right up on the bridge of the nose, so I can just draw a little line right there, just so I know that that means it's the glasses. And then over here on the other edge, it just touches the hat. So it's gonna be right there. That's gonna be the width. Now, these things are manufactured some factory somewhere, right? And they have a lot of precision, right? All these machines that will make these glasses exact pretty much on both the left and right. Why do I say that? You don't want a lens that is tiny on the right and huge on the left. That's, people just overlook that all the time. So I want to make sure that both my lenses, and I'm going to draw the, the width of the lens over here. I'm going to draw the lines up higher for you guys' benefit so you can see up here. Because I want to make sure you guys can see this. They should be equal. So this lens is roughly that big. Should be the same as the other lens if I got my proportions right. And when you look at that, it's pretty damn close. So I feel comfortable. I can move on. Make sure when you draw glasses that the lenses from left to right are the same. Okay? That they are the same size to each other when you compare them to each other. And then when you draw the top of the glasses and the bottom of the, la of the glasses, draw a line all the way across horizontally like this on the top and bottom of it. That way, they are the same height on this side and on that side, okay? So when you're drawing glasses, you're really doing something like this. I'll just draw a little bit over there. And so it's going to be that. And then the shape of the glasses, you said, okay, this lens is that big and this one's that big. And then you start drawing in the shape of the lens, okay? But give yourself the borders first, top and bottom, the left and right of it. Compare them to each other. Make sure that they're equal, the lenses, and then you can move on. Where's the bottom of this lens? Well, the lowest part of the lens is right here. So let's draw that line across. All the way across on this side. Let's worry about this one first. And it's from the nose to the eye line, right? Which is the skin right behind that lens. It's closer to the eye line than it is the nose, right? It's not really cutting that space in half. It's a little higher than that. So somewhere around eye line to nose, it's a little higher than halfway. So I'm gonna say that. And like I said, take the line all the way across, okay, should be parallel with the feature of his face. That's another thing. All the features, the nose, the mouth, the eyes, the eyebrow, they should all be parallel with each other, okay? Short of, I don't know, picking a fight with a semi-truck, okay, uh, which you would obviously lose badly, okay, your face will be pretty much or parallel with each other, right? All the features. <laughs> you think about this angle for your eyes and then your mouth, you draw it in this angle. Think about the sledgehammer that it took to get your face to look like that, right? In other words, it's not done right if there's an angle this way and then another angle like that and like that. They're roughly parallel. So let's keep going. So there's the bottom of the lens. The top of the lens are cutting just underneath the eyebrows roughly, um, which I just sketched out a little while ago. So I'm going to say... I'm going to rough it in about right there. And you hear what I'm saying? I'm going to rough it in. Everything here is being roughed in. Nothing's permanent. And so now we got my buddy Riley here. We got all his stuff roughed in. And then we see, we start looking at things. Um, I'm not going to do it now because I'm, I'm sitting down. I'll do it when I'm done with filming today. I'll back up. Before I continue any further, a lot of you guys get in this little zombie mode. And you get really like, like in a trance. And you're in this zone, basically. And you're just drawing nonstop. It's like 2 in the morning. You're still going. And then you, you, you get up the next day and you look at your drawing. You're like, what the hell was I thinking? That is a horrible drawing. And the reason for that is you just kept going when you were tired. Don't draw tired. 
okay? You just kept going and you never bothered to sit back. I like to walk away about six to 10 feet roughly, right? Get yourself a cup of coffee and you look at it, you got your photo and you got your drawing and you look at it from a slight distance, like I said, six or 10 feet away or so, so you can take this whole thing in. And then you look at your picture that you're drawing and you look at the photograph you're using as a reference and you say, wow, man, my head is really like, you know, like the Coneheads movie. Maybe you did it really coney, right? Or maybe you did it like a really super round and the guy, you know, it's not that round. It's more, it's sharper, right? It tapers off. So if you can see that, sometimes you can't see it because you're doing this and you're so close to the paper, you just, you can't take it all in. Back away. I'm trying to do that myself right now just by leaning back in my chair. Okay, I know you can't see that, trust me. But in your home, I want you to get off your chair and just walk your butt back a few feet and take it all in. And just sit for a couple of minutes, just stare at it. And you're like, okay, let me see these big ass chunk of space. What's this compared to that? And then you just kind of look at it like, man, my eyes look way too big. Or they are just too way up high or too low or whatever the issue is, you'll see it. And at this early stage, you know, let's go up here where I just drew the little lens example I drew earlier. Look how light I drew that, right? And it's just a few lines, just a few lines. I didn't have to erase shading and all that nonsense people get into. Don't do that, okay? Now, I may do his eyes looking, uh, I want to make his eyes looking down like he is there, but he's kind of looking off this way. I may have him look maybe straighter, uh, down, so I'm gonna move his iris that way. So it looks like he's looking maybe down at you or something like that. So yeah, I'm gonna make it where he's looking more at, at us, okay? More, uh, I guess you could say it's more traditional to do that. And from what I understand, I'm no historian, but I do like history quite a bit. Uh, before the Renaissance, portraits were painted where they weren't looking at, at you. They were, like in medieval times, they were looking always off into space or something, I don't know. And uh, at least I remember hearing that in some history class I had in college. And, uh, and I always thought, oh, that was pretty cool. And then I, can't, I think it was, I can't remember what it was. I think it was Albrecht Durer, I believe, that uh, was the first artist, I guess, during the Renaissance to make portraits looking at you. Don't quote me on that, I'm probably wrong, but I remember I had something to do with the Renaissance. Yes, I did get an A in that class, even though I'm forgetting the information now, it was many years ago. And go look up history, man. Get into history, it's a great teacher, it's the greatest teacher in the world, I think. And it's always good when you look at history, uh, it'll teach you tons. Okay, pick up those old books, written by some guy you never heard of, and read them, see what they gotta say. Da Vinci's sketchbook is great, and it's fascinating to me anyways, to see how, if you look at Da Vinci drawings, you'll have, he had like, he had all kinds of stuff he was drawing. And I remember seeing one, again, I believe I was doing some research for a paper in college, and he had like the ear, and the eye, and the nose, kind of, a, it's a person like in profile or something, something like this, and he had like this, almost like a grid, right? And it was basically, when you look at it, he was counting the width of the eye when it's in profile and seeing how many eyes it took to get to the back of the ear or the front of the ear or whatever it is. That's essentially, that's all we're doing, right? So here's a guy 500 years ago doing the exact same thing we're doing right now in 2020, right? And that, to me, I think that's really cool that we can get in touch with the same human being or the same human mindset um, that existed hundreds of years ago. So I'm gonna move this beard out. I just went across the whole furthest right edge of his face, the hat, drop my pencil. And, and the beard, and it's about that angle. I'm comparing it from the edge of the paper this way, just so I can get an idea of, of what the angle is. And you see it's a slight, it's off vertical, verticals like that. It's a little off vertical, right? A little bit. And so that's kind of helping me to get a better idea of how fluffy his beard is. Okay, so it's gonna go out there somewhere. And then his mustache area is shaped like so. 
it's funny, I haven't seen this guy in, I don't know, 25, 26 years, whatever it is. And when he sent me this picture, at first I didn't know who the hell he was sending me a picture of. Because he sent me other pictures too, of other guys we served with. And uh, it was funny because when I look at the picture, I only realized it was him recently. And I was like, who the hell is this guy that he's sending me? Because he looked so different back then, right? Just like I looked very different back then. We both weighed a lot less than we currently do. And so I'm just drawing the edge of his goatee area. And the beard here. Or like that. And again, I'm just kind of using just common sense to guesstimate the distance of how much flesh I see inside of his face here. Squiggly lines just to kind of let me know it's a beard. Now, how, how big is it? Because he's got flesh on this side right here, on either side of his chin. How much flesh do I see there? Well, first of all, let's come down from the mouth. And we say from the mouth line to about roughly there. What's that equivalent to? And it looks to me about... I don't know, the wrinkle above his eye to the bottom lens. So something about that big. And that was what I was guessing. That's not a super huge important thing, but it is cool to show you guys how to do that. And then I'm just kind of guesstimating the distance between the mouth line and where the beard comes off his chin right there. Okay? Now, if you want to be more exact, that's such a small area, I can guess it pretty accurately, but... Let's just say this was kicking your butt. And you needed to know exactly what it is from his mouth line to where the hair comes off the top of his chin, right? What is this distance right in here? Okay? Let me put a little black line so we're all on the same page. So this little arrow right there from his mouth line to where the hair starts right there. What is that distance? Well, we can just get our little stick here and measure that little tiny distance and say, that looks like me about an eye opening. I put it to his eye. It's a little bit more than an eye, right? Or you can measure into here and say it's halfway uh, between the bottom of his nose and the, the, the bottom of the lens. I don't know. Whatever. And that's how big that space should be. I mean, look at that. I guess that almost dead on. It's a small space, but if you're really, really struggling, there's a way of checking yourself, okay? And so now I'm just kind of using this. And his beard or mustache is going to kind of cut into the lip there and do something like that. Okay, and so it's really late. My body hurts. I'm getting old, and I'm not even that old. And so I'm gonna call it quits right here, and we'll call it part one of writing. And uh, we'll get back to it in another video, and uh, maybe we'll finish it. We'll probably go into part two and uh, do some more drawing and stuff, and then shaded in and uh, we'll talk a little bit about shading on white paper and, uh, and you'll see me use a brush and everything else okay so uh god bless you guys be safe out there social distancing all that fun stuff and <clears throat> make sure you hit like okay and subscribe subscribe to the channel i think if there's a i'm new to all this youtube stuff if i think there's like a little bell if you click on that i was just learning that the other day i think when i never whenever i post a new video it will send you a message to let you know, hey, Robert did another video, okay? So subscribe and hit like on that video. If you learned something, great. Let me know if you're completely confused and you, probably a few of you are probably confused right now. Uh, and, you know, let me know and I'll do my best to clarify things uh, in the near future, okay? And we're gonna do more videos where I'm gonna draw um, more people, okay? And when you'll see me do the same technique over and over, you'll just see me repeat it. In fact, I'm planning to do maybe one of my combat boots, uh, a hat, all kinds of stuff. So you can see how far away from the human head we can get and yet still follow the same rules and principles that I'm trying to teach you. All right. So I'll see you next time.